Dale and welcome to my channel where I talk to you about my sewing journey. Welcome back to my regular viewers and if you're new here I hope you enjoy this vlog. So welcome everybody, this is my unboxing video for my brand new machine which is the Faf Quilt Ambition 630 and in this video I'm going to talk to you about why I decided to buy this machine and unbox it in front of you. Um, obviously I won't be able to give a review on it or anything like that because I haven't used it yet but I'm going to go through what's in the box, what I got in my deal and talk to you about the reasons why I purchased this. So I thought before I actually did that I'd show you what machine I've got currently or what my old machine was and my old machine was a very basic machine that I purchased um, nearly two years ago now and it's the Brother FS70WT. Now I think this machine cost me just over £200 and it was at the time a decent enough machine to give me some of the functions that I thought I knew I needed um, but it hasn't got all the bells and whistles that some of the machines have got that I have learned through sewing that would be nice to have. So it's definitely a great machine as a starter machine um, and for a starter machine actually has got loads of good things in it. Um, the things that I really like about this machine is it's got a drop-in bobbin with a thread cutter so you don't have to thread the bobbin you just pop the, the bobbin in and it does all that itself. Um, it's got a needle up needle down button has a one step buttonhole but I would say that this machine really really doesn't like lots of layers and really struggles with anything that is not a well behaving fabric. It, the other thing that I really like about it is it's got this extension table that I do use a lot I find that gives me a lot of space and it's got fairly generous room here and a light on it but the light is not that great. However, it's served me really, really well in my sewing journey, but recently I've shared on my vlogs that I've been having some real, real issues with my buttonhole. Um, you know, it'll, it'll sew fine for a couple of buttons and then on the third or fourth one, it just gives up. I try everything to try and get it to work and it's just not working. So for me, having used some of the machines as well that have got some of these bells and whistles, for me, I really wanted to look at upgrading. And I was going to wait till next year, but this buttonhole issue that I've been having recently has really forced me to consider bringing that forward. So that is why I bought my machine. So I'm going to move this out of the way now. So how did I approach buying this machine? Well, obviously I had a budget and I didn't really want to spend any more than a thousand pounds. For me, that's a lot of money, as I'm sure it is for a lot of you. However, this is my hobby. I work really hard and you know me and my husband do save and I recently got my bonus through work so the money was there set aside. But so my budget was a thousand pounds and there were some things that I really really wanted to have so top of my list was a reliable machine that um, you know had the ability to sew through multiple layers of fabric, had a really good um, reputation for buttonholes. Um, I wanted um, the functionality to be able to thread my bobbin via the needle. I absolutely hate, 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 when I run out of bobbin thread and I have to unthread my machine and wind the bobbin. It really annoys me. So when we went to the stitch show, and the creative craft show we got to have a look at some of the machines because Sarah from So Sarah Style who I went with was buying a machine so I got to see what some of these machines were capable of and I didn't even know there was such a thing as a thread from the needle so that was important to me obviously a needle a needle threader which I do have on this machine on my old machine is important I also wanted a bigger workspace because I find when you're sewing something that's quite bulky the space next to the foot um, you know it can be quite tricky to maneuver I also wanted some good lighting because I have beautiful lighting in the day as you can tell because I'm in my conservatory but at night it's absolutely awful so I never ever do any intricate work buttonholes top stitching anything like that at night time because the light is just not great so that was important too 
I also wanted the ability to have um, thread cutter, um, automatic thread cutter, which I don't have currently. And I used a machine um, when I went to a sewing class that <laughs> automatically cut the thread and it was like a game changer. So that was important to me as well. And also just having some the ability to do some lettering as well is important to me. And also one of the reasons why I like the FAF was for the IDT technology, which is the integrated walking foot, which, um, you know, it's not on my brother machine. It's a separate foot. There's a faff to put on, a faff to take off, huh? a faff, no pun intended. It's a pain to take off, a pain to put on. And so what happens is I don't end up using it. So it was quite a price. It was 30 quid, I think, for the foot. So it just basically is redundant because I just can't be bothered to change it. So that appealed to me, the faff. The other thing that really appealed to me about the faff was the design of it. I think it's quite a nice modern design. Um, and yeah, there's just something about what it looks like that I really liked. So that was what I was looking for. The reason why I've got... Oh, the other thing that I really wanted was some lettering functionality as well. I am wanting to get an embroidery machine or branch out into embroidery one day. But at the moment... I think a few letters would be lovely. Well, the alphabet would be brilliant, so I could actually put some names and personalise some things. So that was another thing. It wasn't a deal break, but it was something else that I wanted as well. So that led me down the faff route. And I know a few people that have got this machine and they really rated it. Um, Michelle from Sewing Bunny has this machine and she really loves it. So I then did quite a lot of research on the internet and was able to um, look around and see what kind of deals we could get. Um, now, in the end, I didn't go for the, the... You could get one for about £900 um, on, online, but I actually purchased this from David Drummond, who is an independent sewing machine supplier in Edinburgh, who was recommended to me by Judy from The Running Sew-and-Sew. -Sew. And the service that they offer is absolutely fantastic. So for the lifetime of the machine, providing you keep the box and the original packaging, they will come and collect your machine free of charge and return it free of charge when it's time to service. So that's absolutely amazing. And they, when I spoke to David on the phone, it was just like any questions you ever have, any support you need, you just ring us, which is really important to me. I was on an hour between getting the 630 and the 635. So the 635 is the limited edition 160 year anniversary. And the reason why I was going to go for that one is you get an additional five feet with it, including the invisible zipper foot, which obviously I need. Um, and I think, I think they're worth over a hundred pounds, those feet, but I'll check. Um, and then the only other check difference it had was the, the I think the needle thread is slightly different, possibly better, I don't know. Um, so I was having this conversation with David and he was really, really good. He just said, do you know what? It's not really worth going up for the 160 year edition. Um, he actually said to me, stick with this edition and I will throw in the extra five feet for you and also throw in the soft carry case and the extension table for my budget. So for me that felt like a really great deal and that's what I went with. So I ordered it that day and it came the next day and here it is. So let's open it without further ado. Oh, so first out of the box is the instructions, a nice manual there. Oh, and I am an instructions girl. I do use my instructions a lot. I used to get my instructions book out loads on my brother machine because just, you know, I just, I'm very structured like that. I like to read the instructions. <laughs> so what's next out of the box? Oh. Okay, so, so we've got your power cord here, and then we've got the foot. 
So it's a separate wire and separate um, power cord, which is great because I find with um, my overlocker, it's combined and it's annoying. The, um, they all go into the same plug and you know it's difficult to set up the wires um, for my configuration. I'm not really explaining that very well. Okay, and then let's take polystyrene off. So I've got I've got to keep all of this intact. Ooh. The first thing out of the box is the hard case. Now he actually said to me that they are Faf are going to be stopping supplying the hard case with the machines because they are so expensive to make and if they keep them on the models that it will hoik up in price so they decided they're going to actually remove that as a feature um, but I think that is a really nice thing to have and because the Faf has a handle you can carry that with the hard case on. Great to keep the dust off as well. And then let's get the Oh my god, it's heavy. Look. Look. Oh my god, it's so heavy. Sorry, I was just getting everything repositioned. So this is the machine. Isn't it beautiful? Let's just plug in the power so we can see the lights and everything. Okay, here she is. <gasps> Isn't she beautiful? So, let me just switch her on. How else if I switch it on at the wall? Oh, and I can see the lights. You can't really see here because obviously it's daylight, but I've got a light here and I've got a light here and I've got a light here as well, which is amazing. And then we've got the touch screen here as well. So I believe, let's have a little look. So this is here where you put all your spool and you'll wind your bobbin. Just tip that forward. Try not to drop my new machine. And then I believe the accessories might be in here. How does this come off? Ah, that. Oh, and that just lifts up. Okay. So that comes off like that. And then these are all my accessories in here. So let's have a look what we've got in here. So I've got some needles that have come with standard with it. I've got a jeans, a stretch, and then a universal 70, 80, 90. So that's nice. Oh, I've got a hump jumper for those bulky seams, which is nice. We've got seam ripper <laughs> we have the spool that's your second um spool for um i would imagine that's for print needle lovely and then you've got your spool caps and then some soft I'm not sure what they're for but i'm sure it's all to do with spool caps different sizes i've got four and then one in there, bobbins. So Faf takes a plastic bobbin. Um, and what I actually have done is ordered a few more of those because I use a lot of bobbins. I have like probably 10 or 15 bobbins on the go at any one time. So yeah, I I would, um, I needed some more of those. Put that away as I go. Right, let's have a look what feet we've got here. So we've got a We've got the little cleaning brush that comes as standard for cleaning my machine. I do need to get better at that. Oh, I think this is a seam guide, I believe. I th 
think you can set this, I'm not sure where it goes, but I believe you set this and you get a perfectly straight seam. Um, I think it goes like that somehow, but I have to look into the instructions on how to use that. Um, let's see what all these feet do. First, the instructions. To edge guide, yeah, so that is an edge guide. An edge guide. Because this is a quilt edition, obviously straight lines are very important when it comes to quilting. So on the machine is the standard presser foot for the IDT. And the IDT is at the back here. Um, I'm going to turn that around so you can see. So can you see this here? And it just pushes and connects under there and that becomes your walking foot, which is amazing. So a lot of these foot, feet have two versions, one for when you're using that. Um, so that the foot, so that the IDT can fit in. Um, so then we've got the fancy stitch foot for the IDT, which is A, is this one? Fancy stitch foot for IDT, for doing your decorative stitches. Then we've got just your standard fancy stitch foot without the IDT. So the difference is there's a space at the back with the IDT one where the IDT bit can fit in. And then we've got the blind hem foot. This foot is used for blind hem stitching and edge stitching, etc. And you can change the settings. It's, it's a bit more complicated than my current one. I've been using that a lot for my top stitching recently. Then we've got the zipper foot. There we go, the zipper foot for a standard zipper. We've got the one step buttonhole, which I'll be practicing later. I mean, it already looks better than my buttonhole on my machine currently. And then, because it's the quilt edition, we've got the free um, motion foot, embroidery foot. And then we've got the quilting foot, which is the quarter inch foot for, um, piecing together blocks and then we've got a screwdriver and then we've got the little screwdriver as well so I think that'll be for changing the needle yeah so that's what everything that comes as standard that's that let's look how this goes on like this nice very beautiful okay so let's look at what accessories i've got with this as well so see this space here there's loads of space isn't there much more than what's on mine okay so let's get the extension table out let's move this along oh god it's so heavy i cannot tell you how heavy it is so this will slide out and this will slide on. <sighs> Look at that. That is beautiful. Look at all this space. Really like that. And then my faff bag. <laughs> Let's have a little look. So there we go. It's got faff on it. And it's a big, oh my god, it's massive. It's a big bag, you can see, and it's got a arm strap as well. Lovely. Wow. Okay, let's pop that there. <laughs> oh, and then last but no means least, the additional feet that I got. Let's have a look at those. Ah, so these are my additional bobbins for my faff. And then these are the feet that I got included. So, what's this? A narrow edge foot. What's this one? A couching braiding foot for the IDT. No idea what that is. An open toe applique foot. A 
a piping foot, always handy to have a piping, I love piping. Gorgeous. And then the invisible zipper foot as well. So brilliant, so I've got loads of feet there and a lovely new machine. So, I need to figure out how to use it, obviously. Um, I'm sure it's straightforward, but I'll be having a look through the instructions. Um, I found a really, really cool um, YouTube video that is basically got a playlist of unboxings, um, and then it goes through each page of the manual. Um, does a little short video on each page of the manual, which I think is really good, so I'm gonna be following that. I'll put it in the notes below. Um, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this unboxing and you can see my excitement. I can't wait to get playing with this and figure out all the nuts and bolts and lovely features and I can't wait to get sewing on it. Now I need to come up with a name for her. Don't I? Because she's just lovely. But she might just be called Faf from now. But I love her. She's amazing. So this is my Quit Ambition 630. So I hope you've enjoyed this vlog. If you've liked this vlog, please click the like button. And if you don't subscribe to Red already, please consider subscribing. And I'll see you all soon. Happy sewing. Bye.